Shenanigans in the Montgomery County, Pennsylvania Courthouse Presents, Elko's Story. The core documents that you are about to see are real. The people are real. The story is real. This summary will make a comparison of what Elko experienced as a youth to Elko's experience in the Montgomery County, Pennsylvania Courthouse in his old age. Nazis forced Jewish people to identify their assets in Elko's youth. Diane Zabowski and company identify Elko's assets. Nazis devalued Jewish people's property. Elko's house devalued. Nazis forced Jewish people from their homes into camps. Elko was forced to move from his home to a facility for elderly. Nazis raided Jewish people's homes and looted them. Elko's home may have been looted, there is no inventory to account for his personal belongings. Nazis killed people in extermination camps. Montgomery County guardians have actively partaken in the administration of deadly medication towards Elko could be a victim. Let's look at the court documents so that you can decide for yourself if there is a disturbing correlation between Nazis and the Montgomery County Courthouse. According to Dr. Kenneth Carroll, Elko has a grasp of his financial situation and medical needs. Elko had a history of depression. He is also a survivor of the Holocaust from World War II. And he lost his wife of many years and has estrangement with his children. Elko was ensnared into the Montgomery County, Pennsylvania courthouse through a petition from Montgomery County's Aging and Adult Services by attorney, Robert Slutsky. Elko lived independently and was 83 years old. Robert Slutsky stated in his petition to appoint Elko a guardian that Elko was at risk for manipulation and exploitation. Keep watching this video to determine for yourself who you think the true people are who financially exploit Elko. Robert Slutsky stated that he represented Montgomery County Aging and Adult Services in his petition, which was submitted on April 15, 2014, but According to the county website, attorney Robert Slutsky did not have a contract with Montgomery County Aging and Adult Services in 2014. The contracts found are from 2011 and 2015. Why would attorney Robert Slutsky claim he represents an agency from which he has no contract? Could it be for self-serving reasons? Who is Robert Slutsky really representing? Is it his wallet? Judge Stanley Ott appoints attorney Diane Zabowski to represent Elko. A search of the county website obtains 197 results for attorney Diane Zabowski under guardianship cases. Diane Zabowski is routinely appointed by the Montgomery County judges to represent alleged incapacitated citizens. Could the extreme appointments of Diane Zabowski be due to her involvement in a criminal racket in the courthouse? Diane Zabowski requests that Elko be evaluated by a doctor, but not Elko's regular doctor. Instead, Diane Zabowski wants Elko evaluated by Dr. Andrew Rosenzweig. Judge Stanley Ott approves. A search of the county website obtains 25 results for Andrew Rosenzweig under guardianship cases. Dr. Rosenzweig is routinely appointed by the Montgomery County judges to evaluate alleged incapacitated citizens. As a point of historical background, on April 26, 1938, the Nazis issued the decree for the reporting of Jewish-owned property, requiring all Jews to submit an inventory of property with a value in excess of 5,000 Reichsmarks. During the hearing to appoint Elko a guardian, attorney, Diane Zabowski, drills Elko on the whereabouts of his assets. Elko discloses to the attorney forced upon him, Diane Zabowski, that his house is worth $557,000. Elko discloses that he has no other real estate upon questioning from his court-appointed attorney. Elko discloses that one of his brokerage houses is Fidelity. Even though Elko is testifying in a hearing to determine if he is incapacitated, Judge Stanley Ott asks Elko to spell the name of Elko's investment firm. Elko discloses that on top of his $557,000 house, he also has $240,000 in investment accounts. Diane Zabowski drills Elko on the whereabouts of his bank accounts. 
Diane Zabowski extracts that Elko receives $1,600 a month from Social Security. Diane Zabowski exposes that Elko receives $300 a month from the German government. The German government pays restitution to Holocaust survivors, which Elko is one. At the end of the court hearing, Elko's court appointed attorney, Diane Zabowski, along with attorney, Robert Slutsky, recommended Elko have attorney, Rosalind Carlin, as his guardian of his estate. <coughs> Judge Stanley unofficially appoints attorney, Rosalind Carlin, as the guardian of the estate for Elko. Attorney, Rosalind Carlin, was also given the authority to invade Elko's safety deposit boxes. <coughs> Elko's case isn't the only case in which Judge Stanley ought. Attorney Diane Zabowski. Attorney Robert Slutsky and attorney, Rosalind Carlin, work together on a case to deem a Montgomery County citizen, incapacitated. In this case, the citizen is Elaine. If a thorough investigation took place into the courthouse, how many attorneys and guardians would be involved in fleecing the elderly of their estates? <coughs> Although Robert Slutsky represented Montgomery County Aging and Adult Services in his original petition to have Elko deemed incapacitated, in a complete conflict of interest, Elko was forced to pay Slutsky $5,180.72. Was Robert Slutsky's goal the entire time to financially exploit Elko? <coughs> Robert Slutsky's conflict of interest runs deeper than what appears on the surface, given that Elko retained attorney, Robert Slutsky, for estate planning back in 2006. If attorney, Robert Slutsky, did Elko's estate planning, wouldn't Slutsky know that Elko would have the assets to pay all involved in his alleged mock Nazi esque trial? <coughs> Additionally, Elko was forced to pay court appointed attorney, Diane Zabowski, $5,135. Elko did not hire either Robert Slutsky or Diane Zabowski, but Judge Stanley Ott forces Elko to pay these attorneys through his court orders. How much money was given to Judge Stanley out in the form of a kickback for approving outrageous attorney fees, forcibly paid by Montgomery County citizens through his court orders? <coughs> On top of forcibly paying attorney fees, Elko was also forced to pay Dr. Andrew Rosenzweig $1,750 for an evaluation. If Elko's regular doctor had evaluated Elko, or given a referral, would Elko's insurance have paid for the evaluation instead of Elko being forced to pay the routinely appointed doctor? <coughs> in addition to Elko's forcibly paying two attorneys and a doctor thousands and thousands of dollars, Elko was also forced to pay guardian and attorney, Rosalind Carlin, $4,019. <coughs> Robert Slutsky isn't the only attorney who partakes in conflicts of interest. In a separate case from Elko's, Vera was deemed incapacitated and had Diane Zabowski appointed as her attorney. In addition to Diane Zabowski representing the alleged incapacitated person, Zabowski also represented Rosalind Carlin, the court-appointed guardian. Rosalind Carlin is an attorney, why does Carlin need Zabowski to bill Vera also? <coughs> Elko wanted to end having a guardian. A review hearing was scheduled for Elko. Elko is before the same judge, Stanley Ott. Several attorneys arrived for the occasion for another billable moment to Elko's estate, including Robert Slutsky and Diane Zabowski. Although Elko's guardian is supposed to preserve his estate and protect him from exploitation, attorney, Rosalind Carlin, hires another attorney to represent her during the review hearing. All four attorneys, including attorney, David Jaskowiak, will bill Elko's estate. Elko was never given the opportunity to speak in his first review hearing. Instead, doctors and attorneys, to be paid from Elko's estate, argued against his wishes of having his guardian removed. Elko wrote a letter to his financial guardian, attorney Rosalind Carlin, stating that his guardianship was superfluous and not needed. Elko didn't want Dr. Andrew Rosen's wire to evaluate him again. Court appointed attorney, Diane Zabowski, Requests Dr. Robert Perlstein evaluate Elko instead. Judge Ott notes that Dr. Robert Perlstein is quite familiar to his court. 
Judge Ott states that Dr. Robert Perlstein has testified upwards of a hundred times in his court. Additionally, Judge Ott states the doctor is qualified to give opinions of the nature required. Dr. Robert Perlstein administered the mini mental status exam to Elko. Elko did very well on the exam, but Dr. Perlstein states that it is unfortunate that an intelligent person can beat the mini mental status test. Although Diane Zabowski was appointed to represent Elko, and Elko doesn't want a guardian, instead of Zabowski expounding on the fact that Elko passed the mini mental exam given to him by Dr. Perlstein, Zabowski asks the doctor if he felt her client tried to beat the test. <coughs> Diane Zabowski asks Dr. Robert Perlstein if Elko sees any specialists. Dr. Perlstein states that Elko sees a neurologist. Doesn't common sense dictate that if Elko has a neurologist, then Elko's neurologist should be the one testifying at Elko's incapacity hearing instead of Dr. Robert Perlstein, who only spent 45 minutes with Elko, who is a total stranger of Elko, and who has been seen before the court upwards of hundreds of times? <coughs> Elko doesn't want a guardian, and once again his court-appointed attorney asks questions adverse to his cause. Although Diane Zabowski is supposed to be representing Elko in his wishes, Zabowski brings up matters that could negatively impact him. In this example, Elko helped out a lady friend by paying her legal fees. This could be spun as financial exploitation by designing attorneys. In response to another of Diane Zabowski's questions, Dr. Perlstein states that Elko would do well if presented with a math equation or puzzle. Instead of Zabowski ending her questioning when Dr. Perlstein stated Elko was good at math and puzzles, Zabowski specifically asks Dr. Perlstein if it is his opinion that Elko is cognitively impaired. Dr. Perlstein, who was chosen by Diane Zabowski and who has been in the court hundreds of times, responds that Elko is definitely cognitively impaired. Two weeks after the doctors and attorneys discussed Elko's capabilities, without Elko being able to defend himself, the hearing continued and Elko was briefly given a voice. Prior to Elko speaking, his court-appointed attorney, Diane Zabowski, announced that Elko would be agreeable to having professional guardian Deborah Clock as his court-appointed guardian of the person and the estate. Recall that an attorney is supposed to represent the wishes of the client. Elko did not want a guardian. When Elko is finally allowed to speak, his statement is contrary to his court-appointed attorney, Diane Zabowski, since Elko states that he is not in agreement that he needs a guardian. Even more disturbing is that at the time of this hearing, Judge Stanley Ott, Diane Zabowski, and David Jaspowiak were all aware of the deadly dose of Haldol administered to another incapacitated person of which the newly proposed guardian, Deborah Clock, participated. As a point of historical background, in September of 1939, hospital patients with mental or physical disabilities were considered life unworthy of life in Nazi Germany. The Action T4 Euthanasia program was initiated by the SS in order to eliminate the disabled people. These secretive killings of the disabled soon led to the creation of extermination camps, which killed able bodied men, women, and children. Did Elko survive extermination in Nazi Germany, only to be medically mistreated and robbed in his 80s in the United States of America? After Elko was appointed as new guardian, Deborah Kluck of DLK Managed Care Solutions, he was also forced to pay Dr. Robert Perlstein $1,200 through a court order from Judge Stanley Ott. Oh by the way, this chicken scratch submitted to the courts by Dr. Perlstein is part of Elko's $1,200 bill. How long did this take to fill out? <coughs> Additionally, Elko was forced to pay attorney Robert Slutsky again, this time, $3,222. <coughs> Elko was also forced to pay court-appointed attorney, Diane Zabowski again, this time $5,693. Elko was forced to pay Rosalind Carlin again, this time $8,537.50. And now David Jaspalviak is on Elko's bankroll, and Elko was forced to pay Jaspalviak $4,815.
Deborah Clark was assigned as Elko's guardian on April 30, 2015. Deborah Clark submitted a homemade spreadsheet concerning Elko's finances to the courts. A closer look at Deborah Clark of DLK Managed Care Solutions homemade spreadsheet shows questionable transactions. What is the withdrawal for $750 for? What are the checks for over $3,000 for? What is the withdrawal of $1,800 for? Deborah Clark of DLK Managed Care Solutions did appear to accurately document the tens of thousands of dollars that Elko was forced to pay the alleged court mafia who work out of the Montgomery County, Pennsylvania courthouse. Also note that in Deborah Clark's inventory, there is no accounting of other personal property of Elko's, including for example his wife's jewelry, his computer, his tools, his television, and other items of value. The lack of these items means that Deborah Clark could steal Elko's valuables or give them to Judge Stanley Ott or other friends of the court, and there would be no accountability. As a point of historical background, in Nazi Germany, Nazis raided houses and stole belongings. Between 1933 and 1945 a conservative estimate is $8 billion in private property was stolen from individual Jews and Jewish families. The property was never returned, and compensation never given in many cases. In an excerpt from Harvey's niece's affidavit concerning the same guardian, Deborah Clark, who was appointed to Elko, she states that her uncle's grill, file cabinet, and dresser appear to be missing. Recall also, Deborah Clark of DLK Managed Care Solutions was involved in the potentially deadly dose for her previous ward, Harvey, that is, 5 milligrams a day of Haldol. Haldol is used as a chemical restraint. As seen in court records for Harvey, the administration of a daily dose of the inappropriate, Potentially deadly medication, Haldol, began at Mercy Suburban Hospital. Deborah Clark raised no concerns that her ward was being administered 4 mg of Haldol daily. The dose was increased to 5 mg daily after Harvey was relocated to the assisted living portion of the Shenandoah in Audubon, Pennsylvania, by the doctor at their facility. Elko appears to also have been brought to Mercy Suburban Hospital as Deborah Clark's ward. Did history repeat itself? Please make comments to this video with any insight into affiliations between Deborah Clark, her wards, and Mercy Suburban Hospital. As a point of historical background, in Nazi Germany, Jewish people were forced to sell their jewelry far below market value. Let's look at Elko's progressively devalued house. On May 19, 2014, Elko testifies that his house is worth between $550,000 and $560,000. On August 19, 2014, Elko's guardian, Rosalind Carlin, states in her inventory that Elko's house is worth $495,000, which is approximately $60,000 less than what was stated by Elko in court. In Rosalind Carlin's petition to invade Elko's principal on December 19, 2014, in order to pay attorney fees, she states Elko's house is worth $480,000, which is $15,000 less than her previous estimate. On July 16, 2015, Elko's new guardian, Deborah Clark, states in her inventory that Elko's house is worth $391,000 which is approximately $90,000 less than the estimate on the petition to invade principal. Elko's house sold for $400,000 in February of 2016, forcing Elko out of his home into a facility. The Zestimate on Zillow.com is well over $100,000 more than the selling price. The Zestimate is closer to Elko's statement from court in 2014. If Deborah Clark wanted to preserve Elko's assets, as she is supposed to do, would she have sold Elko's house for over $100,000 less than market value, or was Elko's house destroyed by Deborah Clark rummaging through it to steal all his valuables? What decision have you made concerning the similarities between Nazis and Judge Stanley Ott, attorneys Diane Zabowski, Robert Slutsky, Rosalind Carlin, David Jaskowiak, Drs. Rosenzweig and Perlstein, and guardian, Deborah Clark? Are there Nazi-esque judges, attorneys, doctors, and guardians?
who have infiltrated the Montgomery County Courthouse, exploiting Montgomery County citizens. Shenanigans in the Montgomery County, Pennsylvania courthouse is dedicated to exposing the alleged criminal racket that exploits the citizens of Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. The views in this presentation are the opinion of the narrator, which are protected by the First Amendment of the United States Constitution.